Okay, there are a couple of reasons for doing the plot all by itself. Um, so what we want is a plot, right? Plot. Um, and the re the biggest reason, though, is just because it's so important that it really does deserve to be um, done all by itself, even if it is something like this. So uh, what we'd really like to look at is what is this deflection theta as a function of distance d, right? Um, and I think at this point it's been long enough that maybe we should actually look at what these are again. So you remember that physically we had a um, torsion spring attached to a um, rod and at the end of the rod we had our object O, right? And um, that torsion spring had this um, angle here with respect to the x-axis, all right? And so that is theta zero, the um, equilibrium angle. And then this smaller angle is the um, angle theta that we're measuring. Then we're moving this source up and down along here. This is what I'm calling D, and that's our source point one. Okay, so that's what we're looking at for what we're doing, and what I'm going to plot is what is this theta as I move this back and forth. Right? And and again, what we saw for our um, for our theta in a um, very small angle approximation was 1 plus um, some constant q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, and I forgot that 1 over k. I don't know why. Um, and then r d over d minus r cubed. And that's all over this theta naught. Now this is actually for a very small, this is for a small angle approximation. And by that I said all sine thetas go to um, theta and cosine theta goes to one, okay? Um, that's a fairly common approximation. You use that a lot if you're looking at small angle, um, small angle oscillations, for example. Um, in this case, we're doing it just because if we hadn't, we wouldn't have had a nice linear function here um, between theta and uh, theta naught. It's not linear in these variables, but it is um, linear somewhere. It's nice, something that was easy to solve for. Okay. Um, now, what is clear from both the physics and from this, right, um, this is a positive definite um, number, right? So we're okay here, um, as long as, remember that we already defined um, Q and Q naught to be opposite signs, right? So that it's pulling in. So it should, so we're stuck with it coming in here. And these guys are all, this is all positive. These are all positive numbers. Um, this is a positive numbers or radius. This distance here is a positive number. And this has an absolute value of sign. So it also must be a positive number. So because of that, we know that the maximum possible um, theta is just theta naught, right? If all of this goes to zero, we get theta naught. All right, so we're okay with that. So we can just say whatever we get, it's going to have a maximum at theta naught. Now, we're a couple of places that that's true. Well, um, it's true way out here at infinity, right? So let's pretend it's almost there by the time we get over here. So it's so over at infinity. Uh, the charge is very, very far away. Therefore, um, there's very little deflection here, right? Um, it's also true that we're close to theta naught when we make d zero because the force is going to pull the force from the um, source charge. If we bring it here, is going to pull this way. And that's just going to pull the um, ball towards the rod. So it's not going to change the angle at all. There's no torque. So we end up with that point as well. Um, since this is a maximum, probably what's going to happen is it's going to go through a minimum, right? And we can actually see where that minimum is going to be. So this number here, this um, denominator, gets extremely large when d, uh, d is equal to minus r, or d is equal to r, right? Um, in fact, it goes to infinity. 
So this goes to infinity, that means theta goes to zero. So when d is equal to r, we've got zero, okay? And so that means we get something that looks very much like this. Um, yeah, should have drawn it and then marked r, yeah. Uh, that's a sneaky way to do it. All right, so um, this is what we have here. Now, the question is, what we wanted, what we would like to know when we're thinking about this is that, okay, I made this approximation. Um, according to this, when I get my charge here, right, when I get my charge here, this guy's going to come and be at the same place. Now, that's not always true, right? Um, in fact, it's almost never going to be, it's almost never going to be true unless um, this angle is very small, which probably means that these guys are going to touch, and it still won't be true, right? Because the balls will, um, the, the balls themselves will touch and so forth. So, so um, this point is suspect. This point probably won't go to zero if we don't make the approximation, all right? Um, so the whole thing probably won't go there. So this is, this is our answer. This is our, with our approximation, right? Uh, so, but if you want to look at it without the approximation, um, then it'll do something like that, right? At R, it'll come down to here, and and so that's all right. Uh, now let's let's see. The other two points, however, are completely physical, right? We we can look at that with physical reasoning as well as looking at this thing and say, okay, if the um, charge is infinitely far away, uh, there is no um, there is no torque, so it's so the spring isn't going to deflect at all. Also, if the um, if the charge is here. The, there's no torque because all the, the force is acting on the line, the, on the same line as the um, as the spring, so everything's fine there. So what will really happen is something probably like this. There may be some shift left or right. I don't know. I didn't do it. Um, but we we could still see some. Um, we could still see a little bit of an effect there. And that would all be due to the fact that um, we added more terms in here, right? Um, in fact, we, you, you know, we could not make the, the approximation at all. And in fact, if you look at look at our equation here, or what's well, not here, but if you look at our equation um, from the last video, it's pretty obvious that we'll have to use the. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious that if we add the next term, for example, right, um, the, like that, we end up with a complicated enough function that we'll have to uh, go ahead and and use the um, computer to solve it to find the actual answer. And so, in that case, we might as well just use cosine and sine, right? There's no, there's if we're going to have to go go ahead and um, find the answer numerically, there's no. There's no gain to um, additional terms in this approximation. So that, that's about it. So what we've seen is basically you can find this curve for d and theta and use that to test um, Coulomb's law. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you in class.